you folks, starting a new build. I've started the Gloucester Gladiator Mark 1. Um, I've done the uh, fuselage and Fadow Etch and stuff has been put in. Um, there is more Fadow Etch to go in, which is coloured, so I can't do that until this lot's painted. Um, the frame and the cage parts all done. Uh, there's the one part of the coloured photo etch, which is the instrument panel. Um, I've got yet to put Microsoft Clear, Crystal Clear, which is like a PVA glue. When it dries, it goes crystal clear, and I'm gonna put them on the doll so it's like there's like glass. All the seat is put in. Um, trying to bend the, the photo etch around for the pedals is so fiddly. I can't get it straight so the best I'm going to do you're not going to see that bit anyway um, you also have um, radio box which goes behind the pilot um, this sits there but again I'm going to paint it and then put it in because if I paint it I won't be able to get behind the seat and stuff so also there is photo etch to go on the seat which is seat belts um, and I'll check in when this lot's painted and put together this section is interior green painted in RAF interior green I've got yet to do the fine details and black and silver and chipping up and weathering. This bit also is the interior green as well colour. Again, it's got to be painted in black, silver, bits of red, all the fine detail work, but the base colour is the interior green. The um, radio box, again, it's going to have to have fine detail parts on it as well. The colour. The colour is this, it's done by AK, RAF Cockpit Green. It's the only one that does cockpit green. It's the uh, proper colour. Um, so Spitfires, um, and Hurricanes, and the Gladiator. Um, the Hunter probably, probably Sea Fury. Um, any World War II fighter and bombers and British aircraft from the World War II be this interior green colour. This is the last bit of the video of the cockpit detail because it's all complete now. Um, I can't really do a, a video once I put it together because you're hardly going to see it. But this is the finished product with the seat belts, um, all the interior detail, the radios complete and weathered and washed and stuff. The instrument panel. It's got to go in as well, that's all finished and completed. This is the interior, chipped up, weathered, washed and beat up. And I'll only go so far because the back part you're not going to see anyway at all. This is painted, weathered, washed and silver framing. The other side, left and right, both the same, chipped, washed, weathered. Um, and once I put it together, I'll, I will quickly show you once it's put together, but you're not, as I say, you're not going to see hardly any any of it together. Once it's together you're not going to see it. There's it put together. I've got to put the other side of the fuselage together and once I've done that you're pretty much not going to see a, a hell of a lot. You do all this work and then you're not going to see it. Unfortunately that's the way a lot of model modelling goes. I know it's in there and so will you if you watch the video. See, once the tubs have been put together, you don't really see the too, too much of the cockpit. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, you're going to have a little bit of canopy to go over the top. Um, and I'll check in when I've got some more progress. 
Folks, these parts are the, for the engine. I've just finished washing the parts to get all the residue off because you need to wash your resin parts because they have resin residue on them and it can affect your paint job and stuff. Um, I will check in with you once I'll start assembly. This is where I'm at with the uh, engine. It's all complete with the cylinders. I've yet got to put on the exhaust manifolds which go on the back and the two um, air vents I believe they are to go down the bottom of the engine and the engine cowling also yet to go on because that gets attached to the fuselage and I check in once that's when it's done also it has to be painted as well and washed weathered um, once that's all complete um, Folks, ladies, gentlemen, right, um, across the Gladiator is pretty much put together now. Um, as you can see, uh, most of the fit issues, there isn't any. The kit's that good, it pretty much snaps together. It's such a tight fit, you wouldn't really require any glue for some most of these parts, like the wings, some of these parts, landing struts. These these struts, there's there's such tight fitting. Didn't really need any glue, but obviously you you want to glue them in. Um, and the upper wing is all done. Um, and this wheel sit somewhat, somewhat like that. Um, also I've yet to got to put the engine on, which again it's such a tight fit. Somewhat like that as well. Um, uh, as I say, I'm just resting it on there. I don't want to put them on the upper wing because otherwise I'm going to have difficulty painting it. Also, what I do is paint all this and just clip it in, clip it into place because it's like I say, it's such a tight fit and the kits got together so well. I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, I've paid. Fifteen pounds, and that's dead cheap for this little kit, and it's superb. I mean, it, I, I'm impressed that much. I might even consider buying another one because it was that good. It's really, really good. I, I would highly recommend buying this kit and doing it if you can find one. It's, it's such a good kit, and I'll catch you when it's all painted silver. Ladies, Right here, I've painted the aircraft in gloss primer black. The primer is done by Ultimate Primer Models or Ultimate Primer. Um, that's the uh, primer I used. Um, once this is uh, dry, I will put down the silver base. And the silver base is Tamiya's uh, base coat. Sorry about that, guys. That's the compressor. And I'll check in when I've uh, got the silver coat. Right, folks. The the airplane is all painted in the base silver. Um, the next time you uh, next video I'll be doing is when the aircraft will be completed, and. And there's the texture. That's the silver I use, Tamir's Tamir's spray can AS twelve, which is base metal silver. I will go over the aircraft with some AK Interactive, uh, possibly other silvers and highlight certain panels so it, it there's like different, how can I say it, so the, the metal's like in different stages of wear and stuff and it's, it won't just look like one generic silver colour, it'd be like broken up. Um, so this one here is going to be different. These two are going to be different. That one's going to be different. Uh, flip the aircraft upside down. 
Gonna have this one. This one on the front cowling is gonna be different. Flip the aircraft round. That one on the front cowling is gonna be different. That square. And we've got a square underneath there is gonna be in different shades of silver. Probably a little bit darker, maybe a little bit lighter. Pens. I'll check in when I've done that. Right folks, I've done the panels in silver. I'm not quite sure if you can actually see them in see them on camera. But this one here. It's, you can see it's slightly different to the rest of the aircraft. This one here on the front is slightly different to the aircraft. I've also done it on the A1 flaps. You can see it's slightly different. This one is slightly different. Um, spin the aircraft round. You can see that panel is slightly different. Um, the one at the front is slightly different. You can see those two under the, the belly is slightly different. And these bits on the end have been done but they don't really stand out. But you can definitely see this is a different type of silver. What I've used is um, Mr. Hobby Chrome. Um, I'll show you. I'll just pause the video for a sec. Right, that was the colour I used. Mr. Hobby's Super Metallic Metals. There's their metal range. Um, it's the chrome silver. That's what I used to break up the panels on the aircraft. Um, the aircraft's got to be uh, gloss coated now, decalled, washed, weathered. And I believe that'd be it. Um, that'd be on the next video. Check that out. And I'll catch you lot later. Right, guys, the engine is all complete now. There's, there's the uh, resin detailed engine. Just needs to be painted and weathered and washed and stuff. There's the exhausts go on the bottom of the engine. Here's the engine cowling, it's all done. And then a little, some kind of air vent, I believe, goes on the bottom of the engine underneath the, uh, this is underneath the cowling. Uh, there's, and there's the inside the cowling. Uh, I'll check in when this is painted as well. Howdy, folks. I've just finished doing clear coating on the Gloucester Gladiator. It's all clear coated now. There she is, all clear coated, nice and shiny. The wings have been done as well. All nice and shiny. The other ones are done in a different shade of silver, so it breaks it up a little bit. So is the aircraft, um, which I mentioned earlier. I've also done the cowling, the copper, the front part of the cowling. That's all been clear coated. You can see it's a little bit shiny. I've also just finished the engine. There isn't much detail. The engine is pretty clean and it's like just generic black. Um, what I'll do is I will show you a picture of the real engine in comparison to my model. So what I've done is I've taken it from what engine is running in the aircraft today, which is in quite pristine condition. So the engine doesn't look overly great it just looks quite black i've also done propeller i'll show you again um, the real propeller um, I, I had fun in games doing a green stripe down the leading edge of the propeller that was fun trying to master that up it's the uh, cream color is mr hobby random it's called the, the color cook the, the color is called random which is like cream 
dark green is RAF um, green, just normal RAF green. The brown is known as uh, FX10, which is to me is flat brown, and the silver part on the on the propeller as well, the silver circle is to me is FX. 16 I believe which is just uh, flat silver um, I will show you the propeller and engine comparisons against photographs As I say, that's where I'm coming out with the Gloucester. Um, put the cowling onto the engine, the engine's got to go into the Gloucester, decal it up, clear coat over the decals as well, washed and weathered as is. Um, I'm going to have to practice more on the rigging. Um, I should have done a different aircraft possibly, or learnt to do the rigging before, before doing this aircraft. Um, Bit, uh, bit on my side, a bit of a mistake really doing an aircraft which required rigging when I've never done rigging before. Um, I know we've all got to learn some time, but um, as I say, there's my Gloucester. Um, that's probably how I'm going to leave it, I'm not going to do any more. Um, 